For the last three seasons, Brian Bergstrom has been the co-defensive coordinator for the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. In each of the last two seasons, SDSU has finished in the top 20 nationally and points allowed, while Bergstrom has helped lead the Jacks to the FCS championship game in the spring of 2021, along with the semifinals this past fall. On December 29th of 2021, Winona State named Brian Bergstrom the new head coach. How have things been uh, for you and uh, your family with this uh, this move? Well, I appreciate you having me on, Matt. There, uh, things are going really well. Um, I, to be honest, my my life has been somewhat crazy in 2021 with uh, two two football seasons, as you mentioned, uh, at South Dakota State and playing 25 games and dealing with some of the COVID issues and, and just really proud of what our players were able to accomplish. And my wife and I thought we'd maybe get a little bit of downtime around Christmas and uh, <laughs> relax and take a big nap, but uh, got a different plans. And uh, this opportunity presented itself uh, here at Winona State and, and we couldn't feel more blessed uh, to be a part of this. And we hit the ground running and, you know, basically from the beginning of January till signing day, the, the priority was recruiting and that that certainly has a normal pace to itself. But then when you condense it into such a short period of time, uh, it makes for uh, being a lot of places at uh, a lot of different times and moving quickly and really proud of our staff for all the work that uh, was done in that short amount of time. And and then after my priority since signing day has been really diving in and getting to know our current team on more of an individual level. Uh, as opposed to a whole team. But going back to the original question, really blessed to be here and and excited. Obviously, you've gotten a chance to see as you go all around town in Winona, uh, obviously the footprints of of Tom Sawyer, the head coach for 25, you know, 25 seasons at the school. You take a look and it's real easy to see his, you know, his footprint everywhere. Um, what is it going to be like for you to essentially have to replace a guy who's put put in a winning culture and been able to maintain it. School that's now coming off of what, a seven and four campaign. Um, how do you look to go ahead and and kind of step into that role? Well, w- one, I step into it with gratitude that I get to step um, behind someone that has been so legendary in terms of doing it the right way over a long period of time, and very grateful for that. And I I also remind myself daily that I was hired to be me and not hired to be Coach Sawyer. And I think what people will see and and people that know us both understand our our priorities are in the same spot and our purpose of why we coach uh, to impact kids uh, and using football as a platform uh, is, is right along the same lines. And it will take me certainly time to uh, get to know the people of Winona as much as he does. But sure. for example, for example, today, him and I uh, went around town and he's he took the time to introduce me to some some key people in Winona. And and that's that's the teamwork that we're working with. You know, I talked to him throughout the interview process some and and then certainly um, after I got the job and, and he's actually still uh, working in a fundraising capacity uh, for Winona State. Um, so we see each other quite a bit. And I think our personalities where we both want what's best for the kids and we're both humble and, and work hard, that our personalities mesh and neither of us are threatened by the uh, by the other. And, and it's been a really good partnership so far. And uh, I, I certainly feel the support and the love of the university, the Winona community and and uh, certainly Coach Sawyer and, and his family as well. I think I think a lot across the northern sun, a lot of people just kind of assume that Coach Sawyer was just going to kind of ride into the sunset. Uh, I haven't gotten the impression that's really going to be the case. It sounds like he is still very interested in being in and around the program and the school um, and, and being able to kind of assist in any way that he can. Um, is, that, is that a fair take? And then also uh, kind of how do you look to use him as a resource yourself? Yeah, well, you're right. He does, he does want to be involved, um, but he said many times he doesn't want to be the head coach anymore. Uh, but he <laughs> wants so it, he, it's not him pushing uh, an agenda right. by any means. Uh, he's he's there in a supportive uh, fashion, uh, whether that be 
helping me network, helping the football program and Winona State Athletics and Winona State raise money uh, for the facility upgrades that that we're um, that we're working on right now. And he his perspective is he just wants to help. And I want to utilize that help. You know, I, I have not been a head coach before until about a month ago. And there's a certainly a steep learning curve. I think anybody would tell you when they start sitting in that chair. And um, so he's a sounding board for me about how did he handle this or that. And uh, like I said, I, I, I could not have asked for a, a better uh, situation in terms of a predecessor uh, for the, the legacy and, and the established program that he was able to build uh, with with his with the staff and obviously all the, the the players that have come before and then him being still in town and so helpful uh, to me while I am here and uh, sure you know I told him that today when we went out and, and met people over the last handful of years you've been um, underneath Coach Stig over at South Dakota State. Uh, extremely well-respected man and coach uh, in the profession. What, when you basically were finishing up your time there, and as you mentioned, very busy 2021 season you guys had playing, you know, 25 games and, and going deep into the playoffs. At the end of that, what made you feel like it was your time to potentially pursue a head coaching job? And kind of furthermore, um, what did you feel that you learned from him in the process? Yeah. Well, I think um, it was probably five, six years ago, uh, maybe even a little bit more than that, where um, my wife and I, because um, this, this is a team effort for, for our family, a team mission to, to use football to impact lives. And, and we talked about the importance of someday being, uh, wanting to be a head coach and head coach's family. And uh, so we had that kind of set as a goal, uh, but very excited about where we were. Uh, sure. We loved it at South Dakota State. We loved it at Augustana uh, when we when we left for South Dakota State. And, and I think it came to the point where um, you're, you're, you're never, I, I truly believe you're never ready uh, completely to be a head coach. There's only, there's, there's certain things you can only learn while being the head coach. And I got to the point where, after 18, 19 years of coaching, felt like I had been blessed and by many, many head coaches that are great men, uh, great husbands and dads, and, and also football coaches, where I had built a capacity where I was ready for the next step, but also wasn't going to just jump at anything. And, right. and when we had heard that, you know, Winona State was going to be open when, when Coach Sawyer announced last, last spring, that was certainly one that we had on our radar. And, um, really felt like a lot of peace uh, in pursuing it. And we're from Minnesota. Uh, both our families are within a couple hours of, of Winona and the community. We love the, the, the size town uh, Winona is at about 25,000 and, you know, right. 6,500 in terms of the enrollment and we love the outdoors. And so like all of these things were coming together at a school that we feel like we can really recruit to uh, from Illinois and Wisconsin and Iowa and certainly Minnesota. Uh, it, it we we feel like we're in a sweet spot. So all these things lined up and, and I had been very honest with coach Stig and coach Stig is a great friend and mentor as, as coach OJ is at, at Augie. Now they all, they knew that I wanted to be a head coach that someday and, and they, and they were helpful and they, they did everything they could to teach me about what they did on a daily basis. And, uh, so I, I just think after a lot of conversation and prayer with my wife and I, that we felt like this was the right one to go after. And then once we started the process, like all the signs pointed to, uh, if this becomes an opportunity, this is something we should do. So we felt a ton of peace with it. Great. Uh, I've noticed that you've you've kind of preached and and really pushed forward the idea of grit, growth, and team. And and you had mentioned, I believe, and. Uh, I think I'd seen you mention that that was kind of your uh, look outlook or identity. What what can you tell us about that and how are you kind of moving those words forward with your football team? Yeah, it's um, I think culture is, is a term that gets thrown around a lot. Uh, but but to us, culture is the experience someone has in a group or an organization or a family and kind of the standard operating procedures of that and what's accepted and what's expected and and um 
so we we want our culture and our culture is is building right now uh certainly in the last month uh to be built on those three things grit growth and team because if you can get people um uh, in a culture that um that is driven by the leadership but you can you can help them believe a certain way and then when you have people believing a certain way they they, they tend to behave a certain way and when you can kind of foster a behavior towards uh, a, a certain outcome, you get more uh, positive outcomes. So you, you shape belief to behavior uh, to the outcome. And, and that's certainly everybody's everybody's looking for outcomes. So uh, when, when we boiled it down, we, we feel like these are three really important things. And grit is a toughness. It's a resiliency. It's a, it's an attitude of not quitting. It's a, it's an endurance. And I think, we all get knocked down in life. We all get knocked down in football and or in school or in relationship. And uh, we got to be a football team. We will be a football team that keeps getting back up over and over and over again. And that toughness is one of the best, most important traits that anybody can have as a human being, let alone a football player. And then growth is just focused on getting a little bit better every day. It can be a fraction of a percent every day. And, and there's going to be days you don't get better. Uh, but you got to wake up with that intentionality of we are going to get better today. That is 100% the goal. And if it happens, that's awesome. If it doesn't, we'll get it the next day. But that that compounds over time. So uh, we're, we're going to not look at the long view. We're going to look at the short view and say, we just got to focus on today and be one to know today, win these little battles today to try and win the bigger war tomorrow that everybody's looking at. Uh, and then team, it just comes back to loving your teammate, loving your team and loving football. Uh, football is, is a lot of work. And if you don't love it, uh, it can be really hard to do that work. And, and we want a culture uh, that where guys love the process of the game, not just the Saturday afternoons, but love the process, the locker room, the meetings, the just all that work in the dark that goes into it. Um, right. And then, and then loving the guy next to him. So uh, we know that if we can foster those things, we'll be the best football team that we can be. Sure, sure. You guys were able to corral about, uh, what, 30 guys in your recruiting class, if I saw right. Um, you know, in what, what was relatively a kind of shortened window, especially for you yourself. Um, obviously, you had your, your staff who was, you know, uh, doing some good work and, and putting in work before you ever arrived. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you were able to get that kind of class and, and what your thoughts were about the process? Yeah, I, th I think you hit it. You hit it on the head that they did a great job as a staff of, of maintaining interest in Winona state, even when there was a time where there wasn't a head coach when coach Sawyer had, had retired and, um, I had not been named yet. So a, a lot of work and that's a hard thing to do to, to recruit without a, a head coach, mm -hmm. uh, in within the program and they did a good job of that and i think when i was hired we were very clear on what we were looking for how we wanted to do it and who we wanted in our program and then it then it came down to being organized and doing a ton of communicating uh, while we're getting to know each other as a staff uh, but then a lot of hard work and and that hard work included time on the road certainly during the week meeting, uh, meeting a lot of people, forming connections, sharing our vision. Uh, we don't feel like uh, recruiting here is selling. We feel like it's investing. We want to invest in the in the 18 year old and their family and uh, which means form a relationship with them and educate them. And we got a ton of faith that if we do that and we share it passionately how that student athlete's going to fit into our program, that we're going to get the right 30 guys, for example, signing with us on, on signing day. And, uh, it, it required a lot of travel and, uh, and multiple weekends of multiple visits on one weekend to try and make up time. And I couldn't be more proud of our staff for all the work that they did. And, and, a, and a huge, uh, just feel a ton of gratitude to the guys that have, have signed with us, uh, for their belief in us, because it's because of them, uh, we're going to take the next step. Is there any, uh, 
is the is the plan basically to redshirt the incoming class or is there maybe some spots or players that may be in the mix kind of sooner or later due to positional needs or maybe some guys who are just really physically ready to jump in kind of what are your thoughts uh, uh for incoming recruits like that yeah i think our our i know our initial mindset is to is to redshirt the incoming class uh, but we're going to play the best players so if 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 a student athlete comes in and they're, whether it is because of depth or they're just that good, uh, we're not afraid to have that conversation with, with that student athlete and their family, if they're all right, not using that red shirt year, but it would be, it's communicated through recruiting and it, it would be assumed that they would be red shirt unless we start to have those conversations uh, in, in terms of uh, using that year. I think the, the obvious advantage is you, would take what potentially may not be their best year when they're 18 years old and haven't been a college student yet and aren't as physically or emotionally or mentally mature. And you replace it with a year that in theory, uh, someone should be better in all those areas when they're 23 years old, 24 years old. And, and uh, they've had all that, that, that training before. And um, so the, the goal would be to redshirt as many as possible, knowing that if we have a need or somebody is, is better, uh, we're going to play the best players. A name that stood out to me in your group was uh, Nick McCabe um, from Caledonia, uh, obviously a powerhouse program in the state. And uh, he had gone to Northern Iowa initially as a running back, then converted to a backer. And it seems like he's listed now for you guys as a running back. It seems like there's almost like a little bit of a backstory with that, with regard to, you know, your offensive coordinator, you know, Isaac Frickty and his dad, Carl. And what can you kind of tell us about a, a player like that? And how did that all come about? Yeah, so so he was actually already here and, and had, when I got here. OK, gotcha. so when when we when we got here, um, Coach Frickty and I basically got here at about the same time. When we got here, we had two transfer students that were already enrolled in second semester and then there were three high school committed uh student athletes that had chosen uh winona state regardless of who the head coach was going to be and then and then the three and a half weeks after there that's when we got 25 more guys committed uh into our family so well you're uh, that good that uh, that many kids just in that much time that, that uh, I don't know that it was that. He's a lot of work done and um, a, a team effort. We're about working together as a team. And and uh, but in terms of getting McCabe here, his brother uh, what is on our team. Right. So I think that that had more to do with it than anything. And, and just feeling like uh, that family connection within the program uh, it was going to be a better fit for him uh, sure. in terms of um, his previous experience. So. Uh, but I can already tell that we, that uh, he's going to be an impact player for us by uh, what he does on the field, certainly, but just the mentality that he, that he attacks each day with a uh, blue collar, tough kid and uh, guys respected him basically when he walked in the door and he's using that platform. Well, good. What do you see to be kind of the recruiting net for you guys? Um, you know, are you, are you pretty much mostly focused uh given given your location being on the border there with wisconsin and minnesota i'm gonna make the assumption those are your two primary spots i ask this because of the fact that winona's always had oh 25 30 percent of the roster from the chicagoland area it seems like there's been a lot of mining done there is that going to continue or how do you really see the the net that you guys are casting forward yeah our, our net is going to start at home and it's going to start right in Winona and work out from there. But I think our our bread and butter areas are gonna continue to be Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, and then the Eastern part of the of the Dakotas. And then spot recruit, a, a few other spots in the country um, targeting a certain body type. Not We're not trying to bite off more than we can chew, but it will start at home and then work itself from there. But similar states will continue to be in Chicago. And that's uh, it's not a bad trip. And, and really, anybody coming and looking at the NSIC from there is going to be driving through the Winona area on their way to any other school and feel like, like I mentioned before, that we're in a sweet spot of recruiting between Minnesota and Wisconsin uh, and Iowa, certainly. But 
able to get to the Twin Cities or Rochester, Mankato, Des Moines, uh, Milwaukee, Madison, Chicago, uh, none of which being a, you know, a trip that's too long for a family. So we feel really fortunate to be in the area that we are. Then, and then let alone the, just the community of Winona speaks for itself, a, a, a cool college town where Winona state matters. Let me ask you, you, you mentioned, you know, Winona, obviously you were in Brookings for about five years or so. How are those two, uh, how are those two towns different? Are they very similar? What are your thoughts? I, I think um, geographically they're very different um, <laughs> in terms of the, you know, the landscape and the terrain and the water and the bluffs here. Uh, I, I, I would I would much prefer this that we have here in Winona. But in terms of the actual community, I am I, I have been a little surprised with how similar they are. They're very similar in size. Uh, about 25, mm-hmm. 27,000 people without the university. Now, right. South Dakota State's a little bit bigger as a as an institution uh, than Winona State. But I think what stands out for both of them, just great people. Like I, for, for us, it, it starts and it ends with people. And it's really what it's all about. Everybody's going to have uh, facilities or certain majors or something about the school or the community that they're going to they're going to talk about. But at the end of the day, the, the most important thing is those relationships that you make. And I think very genuine people in, in both communities and uh, one where the where the school is very important to that community. They're like one in the same. They overlap right. and they're woven into each other and they both depend on each other. And and I've sensed that at, at both spots. And uh, we love that. My family and I love being in in college towns and uh feeling that 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 family of support and and having high standards too we'd much rather be places where uh, the the bar is held very high uh, and then you're supported to to attempt to get to that bar uh, rather sure. than places where it really doesn't matter and you're really not supported either <laughs> right right um, the transfer portal um gonna be it's gonna be a thing all the more going forward and we're, we're still not even sure totally what type of impact it's going to have at levels that are below the FBS, whether it's FCS, D2, and so forth. Um, How do you guys see the use of the transfer portal at Winona State? Do you feel that you you almost, if you're not using it to some extent, you almost run the risk of getting behind? Or how, how do you view that with such a new thing like this? Yeah, there's a lot of unknown with the portal, and uh, I think in some ways it can be good uh, helping a student athlete find a better fit if it's for the right reasons that they're looking for a new fit. And I think in some ways it can be dangerous. And I think the main way it can be dangerous would be that what is it teaching people when they don't get what they want right away? Is it making it too easy to jump ship? And I think some people are finding that because there's a lot of people in the portal with not as many (laughs) places to go. So um, our our philosophy is to use the portal if there is a need. We want to build our program on the four to five year high school student athlete that's going to be with us so we can really establish that culture that that we're looking for with with grit, growth and team and, and, and embedded in that faith, family, future and football where we're focused on being our best, like one day at a time, being one and all. It takes time to to develop that as an identity, as a, as a culture for a student athlete. And uh, we, we we want them to buy in right away, but they, they, they become stronger and stronger the longer they go. So I have nothing against the portal or, or, or student athletes that transfer. We're just going to start with building it off the high school student athlete. And then if there is a need, we had a couple injuries or somebody quit, and we need a tight end this year. Uh, we could go to the portal uh, to look to look for a specific need, uh, but we don't want to base our recruiting off of that. Sure, you had uh, you kind of referenced earlier the meetings that you were having, the private one-on-one meetings you were having with your team, and I recall seeing on Twitter literally like a sign-up list and you know, right down, down the line. And you were trying to, from what I recall, within the course of maybe two to three days, you were doing your best to see if you could literally speak with every player on the team and kind of forge some level of relationship with them and get to know how, what, how they tick and everything else. 
what were you able to kind of get out of that and, 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 and what made you think of doing it in the first place? Well, I think what made me think of it was that I know that I feel like I could get coached better from a player perspective with a coach that knows me and that is invested in me. And I know from both perspectives now and playing and coaching that you're able to get more out of just human beings in general, uh, but also your your team as a, as a football coach. Uh, when when they know that you really care about them and, and caring doesn't mean everything's everything's fine and everything's nice it means it means loving them but being honest with them and holding accountable and um, and then telling them when it was good enough and telling them when it wasn't good enough but in order to even start doing that as a coach there needs to be some level of trust early on in a relationship that um, we're, we're getting to know each other so my biggest thing goal with that although they were they were long days <laughs> from about eight sure. to pretty constant 10 to 15 minute meetings with the with the football team they were 100 percent worth it because i think i ended the meeting with a better understanding of what makes them tick where they've come from why they play uh areas they think that they can grow areas they think the team can grow so I was able to educate myself a lot from that perspective. And I think they walked out feeling heard and feeling more known by their head coach. And and I, I, I reminded them all on their way out that this door is always open. My cell phone is always on. Like the reason I coach guys is because of you. Like, yes, my goal, our goal is to win. But our purpose is that you become the best human being that you can be. So someday... Uh, you're the best husband, you're the best dad, you're the best employee, you're the best neighbor. And we're using football to teach that. It's a it's a relentless pursuit of winning on the field in which we teach all these skills. And I think it just, it, it was one step forward in building that relationship. By no means is 10 minutes enough, but it was a starting point. So now when I see him in the weight room and I address the whole group, or we have a team meeting in the whole group, um, they feel more comfortable. I feel more comfortable because I've sit, I've sat down and talked to, talked with them uh, one on one. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's specific to football or coaching. I just think that's life and relationships. And uh, it was a step that I had spent so much time in recruiting, painting the picture for the future of future family members. As soon as signing day hit, I went home for a couple of days to see my own family, who I hadn't right. seen in a while. And then that Monday and Tuesday, the first thing I just blocked my whole schedule off and said, "This is for this is for you guys." And uh, that was uh, that was an awesome couple days. With that in mind, certainly you got a chance to see a little bit more, maybe of who you see, maybe to be some of your leaders uh, going forward on both sides of the ball. I mean, you return a fair amount of you know all league type players and guys who have had a certain amount of light shined on them. Uh, who do you see going forward as some of your leaders on both sides of the football? Well, I think um, what, what I've stressed to the guys is that there is a, this is, this is a clean slate and, you know, I'm, I'm just getting into the first week of really uh, evaluating them, you know, like in workouts and, and watching them interact oh, sure. and, and uh, what I told them, and, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of I'm going to say the same thing right now is is between now and when spring football starts, this is an opportunity to start fresh and I'm going to do the same and I'm going to develop my opinions of guys over time, regardless of what the game film said last year. Uh, I'm going to develop my own opinions of watching you lead. So we're going to have a leadership council. Wow. Uh, but we're not going to announce that until spring football. And, and the, the reason is, is I, I don't want to, I don't want to give anybody too easy of a way into that, uh, <laughs> that club. And I don't, sure. I don't want to count somebody out and uh, I'm going to do the same thing right now. And I, I, I it's too early. It's too early for me to even tell you uh, who those guys are. I'm going to have a much better opinion working in spring football when I get a chance to see with my own eyes and our staff gets to see it. Uh, under this new uh, kind of the new push of this uh, of, of this culture that we're we're developing. Sure, the uh, the coaching staff that you you're going to have with you, 
uh, has had another year on contract uh, basically with Winona State. So you, to some extent, inherited some staff. Um, obviously, there's going to be some small level of movement um, and things of that sort. What can you tell us a little bit about your staff currently? And uh, are, are there more things still to happen yet? Yeah, I think uh, when when in, in the interview process, uh, something that was talked about was the ability to, to bring one person with. And that was so we were able to bring Coach Frichty, um, who was at Northern State uh, prior, and him and I had gotten to know each other when he was at at uh, Lacrosse and uh, Northern Iowa, and had developed a, a, a relationship, uh, kind of a, a respect from afar, a friendship, and never had worked together, but uh, we had gotten to know each other enough that we'd be a good fit working together, and and that was important that I was able to. Uh, bring someone with and and run our offense and uh, his he's he was he really came out about the same time as I did and uh, there there will be there there's a few other uh, movements going on right now and that'll that'll become clear and more official in the next week or so um, but I can tell you this that every single guy that I've worked with in the last month here uh, whether they're still here they have left. Uh, or they're they're potentially going somewhere else. Amazing people and uh, and humble, great work ethic, and I appreciate their belief in where we're going and me. And uh, because I walked in the door, uh, appreciating them and believing in them. And uh, I think some movements natural anytime they're in in every college football off season. I think probably this year even more because COVID slowed movement down last off season. But anytime there's a change in a head coach, I think some of that happens and it's it's not necessarily right or wrong. In a lot of ways, it's healthy. And um, but I can tell you this, our, our staff moving forward, we're going to we're going to all be on the same page. We're going to be a united front. And it's not about one role being more important than another. Uh, we're going to have different roles, but just like our team, they're all important. And we all got to have a respect for the role that the the other guy plays regardless of what the role is. It's just a different role and that's team. And uh, I've been just overly impressed uh, with the, just the quality men uh, that have led in this program and that, uh, that will be leading in this program. Has, uh, has coach Frickney been ribbing some of the other coaches at all about how his offense hung a 50 spot at, uh, <laughs> there, 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 there may with, or may not Northern have been uh, a lot of jokes about that. So yes, that, that, that has happened. And that's, it's so cool to see how close our staff's gotten in such a short time. And, and that speaks to the, the people that they are. And it speaks to the fact that you got a lot of guys that just want to do what's best for our kids. That's why we're all here. This is a, this is a player centered profession. And I think when coaches have that backwards and they think the kids are there to serve them, that's when things get messed up. The reality is we're here to serve our players, not from a, you know, pointing down and telling them what they need to do, but, you know, getting underneath them and, and help and, and pushing them up and elevating the, uh, elevating our team. And I think when you do that, uh, not only do you need to elevate the ceiling of a team and, and we do that through our, you know, keep having high standards and keeping people accountable to those standards. Uh, you also got to raise the floor to, to move the whole team up. You can't keep the floor, the bottom dwellers down here. You gotta, you gotta pull them up. And that's, and that's, a, that's a team effort in doing that. That's coaches and leaders uh, that, that do that for you. But our standards around here from our coaches to our players and our players to our players are high and people are going to be held accountable. That's for sure. Coach, I think it's only natural for um, a new head coach to have some ideas on how to go about running a football program, whether, you know, you're obviously coming from an extremely successful FCS program like South Dakota State. Um, what are some of the areas that you would frankly like to see some improvement um, with the program, whether it's training or football performance? Uh, kind of what are some of your goals in regards to that? Yeah, I think – one, one thing that I've 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 seen every everywhere I've been is the power of people, the power of a culture that's established, uh, and the power of working together towards a goal with standards that are kept in line with accomplishing that goal. 
And one of the big things in meeting with the players is I wanted to know from their perspective, what do you guys think? How are we going to take the next step? Because in taking this job, by no means is any part of this broken. A lot of times people will go into programs and uh, in a lot of capacities, it's broken. This is this is not a rebuild. This is a refine or a reboot in some areas. No different than I would want to do if I was on the staff is find ways where we can get better uh, the next year. And I guess a consistent message uh, from the players, and it was powerful because it's them. It's their team. It's, it's their identity as a team as they are. Uh, they're thirsty for... Uh, themselves as, as a football team, uh, having a having a increased sense of urgency and, and paying attention to to the details, and it, it kept coming back up and back up that the the level of accountability across the board they want to see a, an increase uh, in that. They know they can be better than they are, and and better that they than they have been, uh, than we have been. And so that's our job is to find ways uh, to do that. And, and part of that is through the culture that we establish. And it's not, we're not trying to solve it overnight. We're trying to just be better today and, and, and be tough and be resilient and show grit, grow every day, get better every day in, in all areas, football and life and academics, uh, and then love the guy next to you. If you can work really hard and be tough, and fight to get better every day and then love your teammate we can win a lot of games doing that a lot of games and i think i've noticed that at places i've been in the past with great head coaches and great leaders and and i can sense our guys here are hungry for that and and we're excited to do that because with small changes i think can take us the next step i think we're a really good football team right now and uh we can be a great football team we can be a great football team uh at Winona State. Uh, that That is said with 100% confidence. Is it going to take a lot of work and it going to take all of us? And uh, are we going to have ups and downs? You bet. And do I have all the answers? By no means, uh, not even close. That's why I'm excited to do it together. Well, Coach, looking forward to the, the fall. At the end of uh, October, you're going to be uh, hosting Augustana University. Uh, for those who don't know, you were the defensive coordinator there uh, about, what, five, six, seven years ago. Um, and you will then be going against your old boss, Coach OJ, Jerry Oshevsky, and there's still other coaches on staff that, that you know as well. What's that going to be like for you? It'll be fun. It, uh, I, I One of my best friends and greatest mentors is Coach OJ and have – so much respect for him and his family and a gratitude to them for helping um, me and my family progress in the profession. And we absolutely loved our time there. And I think people that know both programs are going to see a couple of programs that are, uh, yeah, they're going to look different in terms of the school or the city or maybe a scheme thing here or there. But at its core, you're going to see programs that are run with the same purpose uh, of, of impacting and as uh, as each other, and they'll see a lot of similarities in, in how we treat people and how we run the program. But in terms of going against them, uh, ultimately, I think we're on the same team because we're fighting for uh, for our, the 18 to 23 year olds on our football team to be the best men that they can be. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go compete and we're going to do everything in our power to beat them. And they're going to do everything in their power to beat us. And that's competition. That's the Football is such a magical game in terms of the the physicality of it, but the scheme and the thinking and the chess match and the preparation that goes into one Saturday. There's just so much work that goes into that one, and Very to true. be able to go against Coach OJ as a as a head coach across the field from him, I think is going to be fun. It's going to be an honor, and we're both going to try and uh, win that football game. Well, Coach, I want you. I wanted to uh, thank you very much for making the time for us today. Uh, I know that you and I will cross paths here before you know it uh, uh, on the sideline, and I'll get a chance to see you guys in action uh, this fall. But uh, once again, I want you to to know I really appreciate you making time for us today. Okay. Well, and that's right back at you, Matt. I appreciate the the opportunity to talk to you and the platform to talk a little bit about. Uh, Winona State and where we've been, where we are now, and and where we're going. Uh, 